So it's um, the first time single handing for a while. So it's kind of exciting now. Um, it's just me and Kona. And yeah, you kind of have the time to do whatever you want now. It's so gonna be reading, you don't need to entertain. So it's kind of it's kind of good. I just cleaned the panels here. So not perfect, but uh, enough so I can be making water. So we have the wind in our back, so there's a south release, which don't happen really often. So it's kind of cool. This is the new sails I made a few months ago. It's awesome. I feel like uh, it feels like a new boat, so I've been pretty stoked. I wish the mainsail turned as good. Mainsail is good, but not perfect. I think the head sail is pretty perfect. So. Anyway, we just left uh, Belandra, stayed the night there, and um, it's always windy. I don't know, it's just me being unlucky, but it was, it was okay. Munchies time on the Black Dragon. So now we're making some rice, nothing fancy, but now we're getting some cheese, uh, cream cheese. So I'm gonna tend to do some kind of cream with that. So I cut some parrot fish. Let's see here, it's written on it, obviously. Parrot fish times two. Anyway, long story short, put that, make the cream. We'll put some fanciest wine we could find. And uh, obviously it is in a bag, which is a box, box wine. And uh, Kona is smelling all this cheese and the fish. Yeah, you tell them. Anyway, that's why she's hanging out in the kitchen. Otherwise, she'll be sun tanning or shadow baiting. Okay, now we have this finely chopped garlic. So after that, we did this. We're gonna put that in there so that it's wine and cream cheese. And uh, we're improvising. I don't know if it's a thing or it should be a thing, but we're gonna find out and uh, we'll go from there. I'm kind of getting excited because um, trigger fish is definitely my favorite fish uh, right now. That's the only one I have, so that works out really well. <laughs> really well. Look at this beautiful fish. Now just a little bit of salt. There we go. This is pear fish actually, not trigger fish. Silly goose. So we left Belandra this morning and we're approaching Caleta Partida, um, just, just um, anyway, pretty close. So I think we will have about an hour or two, we're going about two knots, nothing fast but yeah, 4.4 nautical miles, <laughs> so another two hours. I just um, finished filleting the trigger fish and put it, cut it in pieces and I made ceviche out of it. So, this is uh, Anson and Grande. The water is gorgeous as always. Hundreds and hundreds of rays jumping. Jump little Rays, jump! Yeah! 
Follow your dreams. I believe in you. You can fly. All over. So cool. Go now. It's okay. I just lost my GoPro with a bunch of awesome footage from Isla Partida when I was um, swimming with the sea lions and some surfing videos. Guys, back up your stuff. You're like transfer it to your laptop or any other thing you want. Um, shit, like that was a lot of footage. And that's why you should get smaller I mean, <laughs> Ezi card if you're not if you're not like me. I mean, if you're like me, because. Uh, and uh, so the more cards are big, you just like load them up until they give you the message, or I do sometimes. So anyway, it was all like on there. There was a cheap, you know, Amazon tripod. I don't know if the good ones are better, but this just came off as I was lightly taking it off from the bow, having those sweet shots. Man, I almost not think and jump overboard when I'm single-handing and uh, I could be try to swim after the boat that would have been shit <laughs> that would have been bad so I'm lucky I didn't do that um, but it was really hard to see my GoPro go down slowly and still in the back like I could see it slowly going and or get the float get the float for your GoPro maybe that's also a good idea now it's at the bottom of the ocean floor with amazing footage Still filming. When we first rolled into um, the Sea of Cortez, it was the wind was always in her face and it was always upwind sailing, and the boat is uh, 30 degrees plus. And um, now it's just you know two to four knots sailing, super calm, and uh, the boat is nice and straight. So it's good. I'm trying to be careful with the camera now because I just lost my GoPro overboard. <laughs> lost all this footage. I don't want to lose uh, this uh, phone, so I should actually do a backup of this as well right now. Um, I'll do that. Not the right place when you can see your anchor at the bottom. So the other day I was putting the chain and since I'm anchoring about uh, 12 feet I only put 75 feet of chain and I had this remaining chain on deck and you can see like some of it looks in pretty bad shape so uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the link because the first 75 feet is good and here it starts to be terrible so, so I don't know so I think I'm gonna try to cut it with the sawzall here resplice it and go from there because if there's a big blow and that's yanking on this chain, um, I don't know how strong that's going to be. So I'm gonna remove that, and that's only for the next few few weeks because after that I'm flying to Canada and I'm gonna ordering a new windlass, new chain, and hopefully we get a new anchor from uh, Mantis. There you go, finish the supply. So that's the. 75 feet mark, which is a bit faded. That's a new splice. So, and that was the chain. That was crap. So, might give that to the fisherman if I see uh, see them today. I won't need it. So, there you go.
girl? You know, you're truly Canadian when you're cooking bacon, bare chest, and in your favorite Canadian represent underwear. Today I decided to do my own fish jerky. You let them marinate for a bit, put them on string and let them dry for half a day. You got delicious snacks, my friends. Where's your rock on huh? Where's your rock? We're at uh, Isla San Jose. You can see a black dragon in the background and beautiful Baja. So just walking around the beach. The water is pretty clear. You could see the hook at the bottom once again in 30 feet. It's pretty awesome. So we're just exploring this uh, little fisherman village. Not much, just like a few cabins and huts. It's still pretty cool. All the back, there's those massive cactus. This is my buddy Steve. This guy has been sailing the Sea of Cortez in this gorgeous 20 foot boat. No fridge, stove, or a real toilet. Appreciating the small things in life. I invited him on board after he has been eating canned food for the last three weeks. Treat him with cold beers, fresh ceviche, made with fish I cut that day. Never seen someone so stoked. We left Puerto Escondido this morning. Um, we have about 130 nautical miles to do, so we should be there in the morning. Should roughly about 26 hours. Um, doing five to six knots, making breakfast with some eggs, bacon. No way. It's kind of what it is. Past halfway from Loreto to San Carlos. Um, clipped in here. So I'll try to take some 20 minutes nap. Look around and after that look again. So it's it's okay, I reduce cell, we're going too fast and didn't want to be there too early, so now we have uh, a reef main and barely any jib. And we're still flying at 6.5 or 7. So, going fast. And I'm pretty excited to see uh, friends and family in, in Canada. Uh, I haven't seen a big part of my family for over two years and a half or so. So excited to do that. See my nephew. So yeah, see you guys uh, in a few weeks. Doing the preparation to pull the 
boat out of the water tomorrow. Um, so yeah, a lot of work taking the sail off, taking the halyards, and making everything is uh, good for hurricane season. In the next episode, we finish prepping the boat for the hurricane season and flying back to Canada for a few months. Thank you so much for all the patrons to make this adventure possible. Please make sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. 